But now I have a source main Java folder, and when I expand it, oh, see, I have source in there as well. I don't know if I want that. Um, this is the beauty of of uh, teaching things as I go. So you're seeing the real unfiltered stuff. So I'm just going to remove this, and I'm going to try to say source. I guess that was my fault because I, I put the um, the top level package name as source and maybe I shouldn't have now that I look back at that because I already have a source as the uh, as one of the folders um, so it doesn't make sense for my top level package to be source again I think my top level package should have been named after my website address um, and I wonder if I can change that now I think Oh, Lord only knows if I can do that. Um, anyway, so what I should have done when I when I was creating the um, the project was to say that my top level package um, was probably how to program with Java. So if I were to say new Spring project again, when I type in the project name my first web app, um, you know, two top level package name, I probably should have said how to program with Java. That's kind of the um, the standard. Although even 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 further, I think it should be com. Dot how to program with Java. I think that's what I should have done. So that's kind of the 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 standard that we that we follow. We do our domain name um, followed by the extension only backwards. Um, but that's all right for the sake of this tutorial. I'll leave it as I uh, as it is. Um, but that's just a hint for when you go and create yours. So. Um, I've created the users entity and you see that it's here users and we have essentially an empty um, an empty um, class here although now it's complaining up here because I've screwed around with the uh, the, the source files my apologies people uh, let me just put it to dot uh, Java already exists remove add folder Java will it be happier now da, 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 da. there you go now it's happy because it, it matches the package here has to match the package here um, and it didn't because I changed the actual source folder so the source should only go as far as Java not as far as this source because this should actually say com dot how to program in Java and then this should say com dot how to program with Java so again my fault fair enough you guys can correct that no problem so I've created the users and now I need to let me say hint again and now it'll say I need to add fields and all fields are um, are the actual instance variables inside of the um, the actual entity itself um, so the instance variable should be things like username and password and email. So let me create these fields. Control space. And these are actually going to be strings. Control space. The name will be username. And if I hit control space again, you can see it, there's, there's no more for me to do. I keep hitting control space and there's nothing there. But if I hit space and two dashes uh, following this syntax here, and hit control space again you'll see that there's some optional things that I can do and this is essentially going to be used when it creates the SQL statement to create this object um, just some some helping um, some helping hands when it, it, it's creating our, our data model for us we can actually tell spring to uh, to help us out by uh, specifying that now so that's kind of neat um, so the username should not be null and it should also be unique because I don't want to have two people with the same username that would be a little bit confusing so let me hit enter there you go it creates it and you can actually double click on this and see voila username to string and we have some annotations there um, these are some hibernate things um, actually I don't even are they hibernate uh, no they're actually Java X validation stuff um, and persistence for when it will actually create the database uh, model or schema if you will so it's very helpful um, what else uh, field string uh, field name now is password is the next one I want to create I also want to make it not null 
but I don't want to make it unique because that we don't want to have to force people to have unique passwords. Um, and let me do email field string email. And I don't think it needs to, it can be null if they want to, if they don't want to specify an email, fair enough. So now I've created um, my user object. Great. So now let's say that's all I want to do. Let's say I'm done creating my entities and I want to now have an actual web app application that I can actually log into or rather, you know, navigate to on a, a uh, web browser. So there's an easy way to do that with Spring. I think you just, well, you can say hint again, and then it gives you a list of what you can do. But web MVC is what I want to do. Um, so I do web MVC and I control space and I want to do web MVC setup. So now when I do that, it's going to create all of the things that I need um, for my web application, which is cool. So now it's done. And I also, so that that's, that's great for uh, creating all the um, the stuff, sorry, inside of the main folder here. So it creates the web imp, it creates um, all of these folders that you'll need. Um, well, you don't need them, but it makes it pretty, I suppose you can say, um, for your web, app web application. Now, the one final thing we need to do is create controllers. Um, controllers are things that when you navigate to a specific um, URL, um, it will sort of forward you to the correct view, which means it'll forward you to the right web page that you'll create. Um, so if I actually, I can actually automatically create these guys. I think I can say um, web MVC all. I think that's what I do. Um, you create web MVC all, or you type it and you say enter. And, oh, sorry, I need to create a package as well for that. So the package, usually you want to put this under a web folder or a web package. So you see here users is under domain. So I want the, the, the web MVC stuff to go, excuse me, in the web package. So let's do that. So you see it has created views um, based on, it, it, it created a, a user's controller. So it saw that I had a user's um, domain object, a, a Java object, and it created a controller based on that. Um, so now I can actually, now, now is when the magic will actually happen. So I, I've now typed in all the stuff I need to type in to have my web application created. So now what I need to do is actually be able to deploy that web application that I've just created using Roo onto a web server. Okay, now that's why we have servers here. So let's do that. I like to create a new server. And I, I think Spring Source comes with a, a server uh, when you download it. So if you just go to Spring Source, and right now I use version 2.1, um, it'll ask you where it's installed. And it should be, I just put it in my C drive when I downloaded Spring, uh, the Spring Source stuff. So if you scroll down, I see Spring Source. I have 2.9.1 is the version I'm using. Um, and you just point it to, so wherever you installed it, I, I don't know where you would have installed it, but you have to find out where that was, um, which you might be able to do easily if you go to, um, let's see, Spring Source Tool Suite. If I right click on this and say Properties, so there you go. It'll tell me where it's installed, okay? So again, you just I just went to start and I typed in spring and you can right click on it and say properties and then you'll see in the target where it's installed. So there you go, that's how you find it. So I'll go to spring source 291 and you should see a vfabric TC server. So just click on that guy and say okay. And now you'll have a couple versions of Tomcat. Um, I'm most familiar with Tomcat 6. Um, so it's just a personal choice for me. If you prefer seven, go right ahead and use it. But I just, I'm more familiar with six. So I will click next and create a new instance. And I want to use the Spring Insight template because the Spring Insight server um, 
it's kind of like a plugin for your um, your web server. It allows you to actually test the performance of your application, so you can test um, if there's anything that's running slowly with your code. Um, it's kind of an advanced feature, but I, uh, I I like it, so I choose Spring Insight. And uh, you need to give it a name, and I think localhost is what you should name it. And of course, an instance with that name already exists. Um, I had already done this in my dry run, so I clicked on Insight and I typed in localhost and I said next. But since I've already done that, it, there's probably an existing instance called localhost. So I'm just going to go back and select it. Um, so when you say create new instance, you'll say create, call it localhost, check your Insight, and then you'll get to this screen. And this screen says, what web applications would you like me to deploy onto this server? And I want to deploy this web application that we just created, my first web app right here. I say finish and now I have spring source TC server and it has my um, when I click the expanding arrow here um, it has my server or my server my uh, project so now I'm good to go I click here on the actual spring source TC server and I click the play button and we will actually we're gonna get some errors and that's okay because I want to show you how to fix those errors so let me say play and this is just Spring Insight saying, um, do you want to enable gathering of metrics? Which I do because that's, for me, that's the cool stuff. It allows me to test my application to make sure it's running well. So I will say yes. And it starts up. And I'm, I would think that I'm going to get some errors here related to my database because I didn't set up my database. So I believe I did get an error there. Yes, so access is denied um, for my database. So that's, I expected that. So how do we fix that? Well, I think we can go into database properties, which is in meta inf and spring, or you can say control shift R, which is the open resource screen. And you can just type in database and then it'll open up the same file by double clicking. Kind of a, a handy thing. So I haven't, I haven't yet specified a username or password. So, the username, if you have just the, the default installation of the MySQL server, the username is just root. And the password, I have my password set up as test123 right now. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, that's not my normal password. I would recommend a nice, hearty, um, you know, tough password, as we always hear. Um, definitely a good thing to have. And actually, my database URL is not perfect because this is good this is this is the the URL for the database um, the standard uh, MySQL database but I want to point it to a very specific database for this particular application so let's call it my first web app DB for the sake of not having a better name <laughs> Let's save that. So I hit Control S to save it. Um, this is the name of my database. Now, if I run this again, the password, the username and password will succeed because these are correct. I've set this up correctly, but now it'll fail because I don't have this database created yet. So let me click on the Restart Server button, and you'll see that it still fails. At least it should still fail because I believe I properly deleted it. Yep, so it still fails and it says, unknown database, my first web app DB. Well, that's great, so I'm gonna copy this. Now I'm gonna show you, go into your toad, which is toad for MySQL. Hopefully you have this installed. If you don't, then just go back in my little ebook um, where this uh, video is being referenced or from which it's being referenced and um, and, in, and follow the, there's another YouTube video for uh, installing your MySQL and toad. So install your toad and it's still loading taking forever interesting so I go in and I want to create the database named my first web app DB okay so I go in here I say file new um, oh, I haven't connected yet sorry let me just double click on this guy to connect and I need to type in my password test one two three connect there we go. File new database. So enter the name of the new database. I paste in my first web app DB and say okay. 
and that's it.